You've seen the Amp Mark II annealer here on the channel. Now we're gonna automate it with the Amp Mate. Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. That's right, the Amp annealer has totally transformed how we're able to ensure consistency with our brass and extend the longevity. It makes sizing a lot more systematic, less spring back when we bump our shoulders and that kind of thing. Now we're gonna take what has been, up until now, a manual process, and we're gonna automate it with the Amp Mate. If you've ever seen an Amp Mate in action, it's quite mesmerizing, and I can't believe that I have my very own now. This is very exciting. And then we also have the Amp Stand from Creedmoor Sports that's gonna help support the case feed bowl. That's right, we're gonna be able to pour cases up into the case feed bowl. It's gonna feed down into the Amp Mate. It's gonna individually insert the cases into the amp annealer and then it's going to kick them out into a uh, annealed processed brass tray so i can't wait to get this going i'm going to get stuff out of the box and we'll see what's included Okay, so this is the contents of the AmpMate box, and then we've got the amp stand from Creedmoor Sports over there. This is good news. So it's fully assembled. We've got different case feed adapters. We've got the power supply, a couple of Allen keys, a data cable, that's a USB cable. The press MP press retainer is what that's labeled as. We've got instructions, a sticker, right? the amp is sold separately. <laughs> so I'm excited to get going with this. I'm gonna read the instructions. I'm gonna update the firmware on my Amp Mark II to the latest version, and we'll get this thing put together. Okay, so we read the instructions, and we also watched the setup video from Annealing Made Perfect for the Amp Mate, I think twice, just to make sure we were gonna show you these steps in the appropriate order and to provide the appropriate detail. And in order to get ready for installing the AmpMate on the Amp, what we did was we upgraded the firmware to the latest version, something I've been waiting to do. Uh, we selected the cartridge that we were gonna use for this demo, which is 6.5 Creedmoor. We've got the appropriate pilot installed, which is number 17. We did a case analyze, which produced code number 156, which we stored and we're gonna use that. We've got our Redding Easy Feed shell holder. This is the recommended shell holder for the amp mate. And we've also acquired a metal pan for the hot cases as they're ejected out the back. So next we can proceed to the first phase of setup. Okay, so the amp Mark II is plugged in and powered on. I'm gonna remove the pilot. This is our number, number 17 pilot for 65 Creedmoor for this portion of the setup. Now you notice these depressions on the bottom. These are going to locate right on the tops of these dome screws. And that's gonna orient the amp mate on top of the amp Mark II. I've plugged in the power for the amp mate under my bench. We're gonna plug that into the power port right there. And then we've got our short USB cable, which we're gonna plug in one end on the Mark II and the other end on the amp mate. Okay, now we press the power button and it's gonna go through a power on cycle and sequence. Cool. So the cool thing about the Amp Mate and the Amp Mark II together is together they can accommodate cases ranging from 300 blackout on the short side, all the way up to 338 Lapua Magnum on the Magnum large diameter, long length end of the spectrum. And in order to accommodate that, we've got a couple different parts here. We've got the feed guide, which there's a small, medium, and large included uh, with the kit. And then we've also got a small and a large feed tube. And what you wanna do for each of these is basically take the smallest diameter that the case will freely pass through. So for small, it's not gonna pass through. For medium, it will pass through. So we know right away that is the feed guide that we want. And then in terms of the feed tubes, 
the small one definitely works there as well. So I'm gonna set aside the other parts. We'll install the feed guide next on the amp mate. So if we go over to the housing here on the machine for the feed guide, we can unscrew the stud here from the cap. Those two halves come together to secure the feed guide in place. And then we just sort of drop it in and then reattach the screw here. So it's gonna go down there, which clamps together and we'll actually adjust the height of this a little bit later. Okay, so now we're gonna take the feed control stop and move that all the way to the forward position so that it's out of the way for the time being. So I'm gonna rotate the machine here so that you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. You'll notice here we can actuate this feed block back and forth. So if we drop a case in, go to the rearmost position, the case will drop down. And then as we advance it forward, we're able to see the height of this feed guide. And we wanna lower that until it's about a millimeter above the top of the case. That should put us in good orientation for the system to work properly. I got my step stool for the next step because we're gonna to need to look straight down the feed guide. We're gonna apply a little bit of pressure to this side lever and there's a, a rear depth stop screw which we're going to tighten and loosen until we can just barely see the V-block pusher guide. Looks like that's gonna be good right there. Okay, now we need to readjust the feed control stop. So I'm going to put a case back in. We go back until it drops and we're gonna loosen our lock screw up here and move the feed control guide until the bar taps the case and then we're gonna move it forward ever so slightly so that there's a slight gap between where that tab is and the base of the case. That should be good. Now that we've got the feed guide and the depth stop set, we're gonna take our feed tube with the chamfer at the top and drop that into the feed guide. Okay, I'm gonna move the machine so that we can both see the menus here. We need to install the shell holder. So if we have AmpMate set up here, we can hit start and then we can go ahead and move up and down. You can see this, we can kind of work through the sequence here. Okay, and it has presented the shell holder area for us so that we can use our Redding Easy Eject shell holder. We need a five millimeter hex key. There's a grub screw right in the middle of the shell holder cut out there. We're gonna just drop that in, face the opening towards the feeding area, and then back out the grub screw until it contacts the shell holder and tightens against it, just like that. Now we need to move the carriage to the load position. So we're gonna to need to navigate some menus here. Just gonna move things around so that you can see what we're doing. From the top level menu, we can go side to side with the plus and minus buttons, select items with the start button, hold down minus and hit start to go back up to a higher level menu. We go to the right here, amp mate setup, start, we'll get into that. And then we go to the show holder option and hit that. Now we see a right arrow here. If we hit start here, it will activate that. It's already over on the right hand side. Now we have left hand flashing. Now it will move it into the load position. Okay, so now that we're in the load position, we can set the height of the shell holder. Okay, so again, moving the machine so that you can see what I'm doing. We've got this brass knurled nut here. And what we wanna do is feel the feed ramp and the top of the shell holder. I can feel that it's just a little bit low here. We can use this brass nut to change the height. We want it just barely under the height of the feed ramp. Now we can hit the start button here to move the shell holder in and out of the load position to just make sure that it resets correctly. I'm totally happy with that. So I'm now going to use the Allen 
screw from the back, we're gonna tighten the grub screw to lock in that setting. So now that we've set up the shell holder, we can install the appropriate pilot, which for us is number 17. So with the proper pilot installed and all of our adjustments made, we're ready to test feed a couple cases through the AmpMate prior to getting our case feed system installed. So I just went and hit start there. Got a case that all looks good so far. You can hear it working. It's gonna come up, flip it out. Looks like we've set that up correctly. Let's go ahead and do one more. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and flippy. Awesome. Okay, so now let's now move on to setting up case feed. So we put together amp stand. There's just a single screw that goes into the post. We've got a clamp here where we can adjust this up and down. I'm put it right about there. And I found the easiest way to get this put together is to take our drop tube, snap it into place, and then we can drop the case feed bowl and then have this tube slide down into position. That actually looks pretty good. Yep, so I think our height was about right there. We'll connect power, add some cases, and be off to the races. So here we are. I've cleaned up the bench a little bit. We had set up the case feeder. One thing that we noticed in our uh, preliminary gauging of the cases in the case feeder was that we were getting some sticking, and it turned out when we looked at the primers, they were a little bit cratered from a high pressure load that was the most previous firing on this brass. So we decapped all the brass, uh, which is a, a normal part of brass prep anyway, and now we're ready for the full automatic annealing. So let's see what's gonna happen. This is so fun to watch. And when we're, we're ready to stop things, we just hit the start button again, and that will stop things. That is cool. Well, that was a fun demo to put together. The Amp Mark II is a great annealer and with the Amp Mate, we're gonna have some fun and we're gonna save a lot of time. And what I'm planning to do with this is to multitask. I can have my annealing going on in one station and I can be doing precision powder charging and seeding bullets over in another station and keep an eye on this machine as it's running. Good stuff. And the Dillon case feeder worked good with this as did the amp stand from Creedmoor Sports. I would definitely recommend a case feed system, whether it be the Hornady or the Dillon here for this type of setup. And what I'd like to know from you is, what are you using an amp mate for? What kind of cartridges are you uh, loading and annealing? And what have your experiences been? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you wanna learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're gonna to wanna to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.